Hi everyone, welcome to the first ever competitive exam oriented video from A to Z Media. Thus far, I have been discussing physics for graduate students. Okay, so from today onwards, uh, I'll be starting a new paper, quantum mechanics, and I'll be starting from the very beginning to the extreme end. Okay, and I'll be covering almost every theoretical portions as well as uh, many numerical problems so that it will be helpful for preparing for this uh, CSIR net gate uh, set exams and almost every competitive exams based on physics okay so uh, we'll start with quantum mechanics and based on your feedback I'll be extending my uh, discussions to other papers as well okay so uh, please support uh, like and share okay so, uh, as I said, I'll be starting with the very basics, okay, of quantum mechanics, okay. So, first of all, we have to know the history of quantum mechanics, okay. This part is uh, inevitable, I think, okay. Before studying a paper, we should understand what led to the origin of that paper, okay. So, first, we'll be discussing about the origin of quantum mechanics, what led to the origin of quantum mechanics okay so uh, i'll tell you shortly at the end of 19th century at the end of 19th century physics was mainly consisted of physics mainly consisted of the very well known classical mechanics then electrodynamics and then thermodynamics okay this was the major papers from physics in the end of 19th century okay and what does classical mechanics deals with it deals with the dynamics of matter okay dynamics of matter okay and what about electrodynamics or electromagnetic theory it is better to call it electromagnetic theory rather than electrodynamics okay so electrodynamics or electromagnetic theory deals with physics of radiation okay physics of radiation okay and thermodynamics deals with interaction between these two okay it study with the interaction of matter and radiation matter and radiation okay this was the major papers from physics during that time okay classical mechanics for dynamics of matter electrodynamics for dealing with radiation and thermodynamics to discuss the interaction between matter and radiation okay and this was full fledged okay these three papers were full fledged and uh, uh, they thought that the scientists during that time thought that every problems in physics can be solved using these three papers okay they were overwhelmed with the advancement of physics in these three areas okay later on certain problems came up okay what were those problems the first problem was these three physics these three papers failed at relativistic domain relativistic domain okay and secondly it failed at microscopic domain microscopic domain okay so this physics failed in explaining the phenomenon at relativistic domain and microscopic domain okay and you know that uh, relativistic domain this invention was made when einstein in 1905 proposed the special theory of relativity okay and after his proposal of special theory of relativity in 1905 he told that newtonian mechanics is not valid at relativistic speed okay that was one problem and later on uh, with the advancement of technology uh, microscopic world was invented out okay many phenomena at the microscopic level was invented and that phenomenon couldn't be explained using classical mechanics or electromagnetic theory or thermodynamics okay and moreover there were few problems okay few other problems came up first among them was black body radiation black body radiation or thermal radiation we will discuss each and every topics in detail in the coming sessions 
for introductory sake i'll be explaining shortly okay so this was the first problem black body radiation and secondly there was another phenomenon called photoelectric effect okay photoelectric effect heinrich hertz invented photoelectric effect this problem was also not explained using classical mechanics or this or this okay and thirdly there was this compton effect compton effect okay and then there were many other problems atomic stability atomic stability fifth atomic spectra atomic spectra or atomic spectroscopy okay and many such problems were there okay they couldn't explain these phenomena okay classical mechanics or electrodynamics or thermodynamics couldn't explain this black body radiation or photoelectric effect or compton effect they couldn't also explain atomic stability uh, i'll explain a short term about this atomic stability you know the atom model was first introduced by thomson you know about thomson model or plum pudding model okay it was a complete failure okay later on rutherford came out with the alpha scattering experiment okay that was partly successful but that also couldn't explain the stability of orbits okay electronic orbits okay that was the trouble okay so then later on uh, bohr came with an idea you know about bohr model okay that was the next model okay that is actually semi classical it is based on quantum mechanics okay this bohr's postulates or bohr model of atom is semi classical or it is partly from quantum mechanics okay we will discuss that in detail in the coming sessions okay and later on bohr model had also some failures that led to the quantum mechanical model okay that is the flow of atomic structure okay and later on atomic spectra was also not able to explain using these three physics okay this led to the failure of classical physics these three can be combinedly called as classical physics not classical mechanics classical physics okay this phenomenon means the lack of proper explanations to these phenomenon led to the failure of classical physics okay so uh, that led to the origin of quantum mechanics okay so they have to find something new okay and in the beginning of 20th century this was all during the end of 19th century and the beginning of 20th century in 1900 max planck came with an idea okay max planck came with an idea this was the first breakthrough in quantum mechanics i can say okay in 1900 max planck came with an explanation to this black body radiation or thermal radiation this was an unsolved problem and in 1900 max planck came with a successful explanation to black body radiation okay he proposed that interaction between matter and radiation is not continuous but discrete okay interaction between matter and radiation is not continuous but it is discrete okay till then till that proposal according to classical physics the interaction between matter and radiation was supposed to be continuous okay any amount of energy can be exchanged between matter and radiation according to classical physics later on bohr i mean sorry max planck suggested that matter and radiation can exchange energy only in discrete packets okay and he told that this discrete packets of energy is equal to n h nu okay he suggested that electromagnetic radiation exchange energy with matter in packets of energy called h nu where n is equal to 0 1 2 3 etc okay in short i can say that till then electromagnetic wave was considered as this okay wave it is a continuous phenomenon okay and max planck proposed that it is not continuous it is discrete like this okay so uh, i can um, distinguish continuous and discrete uh, using an example okay water flowing from a pipe continuously okay you know water tap okay this is a water tap and water uh, water flowing from this tap continuously this is called continuous okay and when we close the tap 
at some point water will be coming out as droplets okay this can be called as discrete okay uh, whenever i say continuous and discrete this should come into your mind okay so this is continuous and this is discrete okay so max plan proposed that energy exchange between matter and radiation is discrete okay based on this this is called planck's quantization principle okay planck's quantization principle okay energy exchange should be in integral multiples of h nu where nu is the frequency okay so based on this proposal he successfully explained black body radiation okay that was the first breakthrough later on in 1905 einstein explained photoelectric effect based on planck's proposal okay einstein told that uh, light is actually consisting of small packets of energy called h nu each of these packets has an energy h nu and these particles were called as photons by einstein okay based on planck's proposal einstein suggested that photoelectric effect can also be explained using this phenomenon okay and he told that light actually consists of minute particles or minute packets of energy called photons and each of the these packets has an energy h nu okay using that he uh, successfully explained photoelectric effect and for that uh, for that explanation einstein obtained uh, this nobel prize as well okay and later on compton used the same principle to explain compton effect we'll be discussing compton effect uh, all these effects in detail in the coming sessions and later on bohr uh, used this quantization principle to explain the structure of atom and he successfully explained hydrogen atom and hydrogen like atoms that should be noted okay uh, bohr explained hydrogen atom and hydrogen like atoms okay so that was the failure as well okay he could only explain hydrogen or hydrogen like atoms other atoms are there okay about around 92 elements are there okay so the, those were not explained using bohr theory so later on uh, other quantum mechanical models were introduced to explain such uh, atoms okay and later on atomic spectra was also uh, successfully explained using quantum mechanics okay that is the history of quantum mechanics okay later on uh, so from these five principles it was concluded that electromagnetic wave is actually not continuous but it is discrete and this electromagnetic wave has a particle nature okay uh, if we think about a wave this will be the picture coming to our mind and this is continuous okay so instead after this proposal it was suggested that this electromagnetic wave is actually consisting of particles okay so electromagnetic wave has a particle nature okay later on uh, de broglie de broglie came with a proposal de broglie hypothesis okay he came with a proposal that if wave has dual nature means wave already have a wave nature and from these explanations we concluded that wave has a particle nature okay so wave has a wave nature and a particle nature if wave has particle nature and wave nature then de broglie suggested that particles or materials or matter should also has dual nature it has already a particle nature and he proposed that it has a wave nature as well okay de broglie suggested that every particle is associated with a wave called matter wave or uh, matter wave or de broglie wave okay based on his proposal later on four years later after his proposal four years later this was experimentally confirmed using davison and germer experiment and many applications were uh, developed using this theory okay for example electron microscope okay that was the flaw okay so in short uh, the inventions of uh, max planck bohr de broglie etc led to the origin of quantum mechanics okay later on two major formulations were came out in quantum mechanics two major formulations okay one is wave mechanics wave mechanics that is by schrodinger 
ओके शोडिंगर एंड मैट्रिक्स मैकेनिक्स मैट्रिक्स मैकेनिक्स बाय हेसेनबर्ग ओके सो क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स कंसिस्टेड ऑफ टू फॉर्मूलेशंस वन इज वेव मैकेनिक्स बाय शोडिंगर दिस वेव मैकेनिक्स इन दिस वेव मैकेनिक्स क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स वाज फॉर्मूलेटेड यूजिंग डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशंस ओके एंड इन हेसेनबर्ग्स मैट्रिक्स मैकेनिक्स क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स वाज फॉर्मूलेटेड यूजिंग मैट्रिसेस ओके सो in short uh, the quantum mechanics developed by max planck uh, de broglie schrodinger heisenberg etc are called old quantum mechanics okay old quantum theory okay later on uh, dirac dirac came out with a new formulation or a new formulation for quantum mechanics and it consisted of uh, ideas from schrodinger's wave mechanics and heisenberg's metric mechanics okay he formulated another quantum mechanical formulations and using this he proposed uh, the positron okay he proposed the theory of positron and four years later positron was invented okay we'll be discussing in detail about all these ideas okay so this is a short introduction of quantum mechanics okay so quantum mechanics is now everything okay almost every physics papers solid state physics atomic physics laser and uh, nanotechnology every aspects every subjects in physics has a, an important contribution from quantum mechanics okay quantum mechanics is an inevitable part of this whole physics okay so that is how quantum mechanics came into existence okay so that is a very short introduction about quantum mechanics and from the next session onwards i'll be starting with thermal radiation or black body radiation and uh, my order is like this we'll be discussing the theory part first and uh, the equations in that and after that we'll be discussing numerical problems and then the next topic okay so uh, as i said uh, if you like uh, these classes just like just show it in the comment box and also show it by subscription and sharing to your friends okay then only i'll be uh, getting motivated to do and to give you further classes okay so see you in the next class thank you all